I see, um, I see your painting, Julia, in the back. Yeah, I need to find something to do. I've ordered a frame for it. Did like you? Good job. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. It hasn't arrived yet. Yeah, uh, it, it's beautiful. You guys all did a Ooh. really beautiful job. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And this is the, your largest that you've painted, right? Yeah, I just, I had a piece of paper and I was a bit disheveled last week and I didn't have time to cut it up. So I just thought, oh, what the hell? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I'll just use it in that size and see how I get on. It was like, quite educational. It is. <laughs> Actually, it's... Um, it's freeing as you move into bigger pieces, actually. It's not as uh, not as strenuous, I guess, which kind of sometimes feels the opposite. You think it's going to be a lot more work. Mm -hmm. So it's just adjusting. Um, yeah. But all right, well, this is another fun landscape I thought. I actually, I was hoping Christina would come today because um, I was thinking about doing her rainbow picture that she submitted. Um, but I'm thinking maybe if you guys have some more pictures you want to submit and we can look at them for next month. Um, but I figured this would be a good uh, wintry scene for the end of the year. This is beautiful. So I was thinking underpainting. Mm -hmm. Are you guys up to doing one? Yeah. Okay. So I was leaning towards some uh, red violets and uh purples and uh versus like it there's a lot of green in this so i was thinking you know complementary color we could use some reds and pinks um but i kind of wanted to make kind of dumb down that color a little bit but you are more than welcome to use that um it's kind of how you want to pop that green on that red um so if you want to go bright pink and bright red by all means um i did select a few sticks for the underpainting piece um and i'll send it over here so i'm going to sketch it out though with my blue uh new pastel and you'll see it in this picture here um and it is light I've gone, yeah I've, I've gone for a different paper today um, okay rather than the uart it's um it's the like it's a pastel mat because um, oh so i love <laughs> I love pastel mat. And it's a light, a light bluey kind of color. I don't know whether underpainting will work on this one or not. Or whether you can be better off just doing that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you can do an underpainting on pastel mat. Um, uh, you can do like Luxor archival paper, UR and pastel mat are three that you for sure can use. You can use alcohol, gamsol, water. Um, with pastel mat, as you know, have you painted on it before, Julia? I've done a couple. That waterfall you did. The waterfall. Right? Okay. One, so pastel. you can tell it's like really velvety, like mm. a. Uh, so it grips your your pastel in a different way. Just know that moving your pastel around on the paper won't be as easily done, which I like. It's just a different. You'll 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 see what I'm talking about. Um, I've done both an underpainting on the pastel mat or I've done um, where we're going to paint and instead of using the alcohol you can just uh, use a blending tool and do a dry uh, underpainting so try it out you could even do a dry on half of it and then wet the bottom half and see right yeah cool um, there's also another artist that um, uh, I'm going to try to, Bethany Fields, I don't know if you know her, she's another pastelist. She likes doing underpainting with these fan brushes, mm -hmm. but what she does is she does one pass with alcohol, and then she'll come back with some more pastel, and then she'll do another wash with the, pa with the alcohol on it. So she's like layering, so that's why I said tr maybe try it out with your your dry portion on the upper half and then where the trees are you could um, use that alcohol to maybe darken that pastel a little bit more down mm -hmm. here okay yeah we, we get to experiment 
yeah, let's experiment and see. I'm curious too. I've never done it, so I, I want to see what <laughs> what happens. <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. So, um, like I said, I'm going to reply here to the message here. Um, we, uh, I am going to pull out the blue. And so this is that dark blue uh, new pastel stick. <clears throat> and I sent over a gridded um, picture of this for you if you need to look at it. It kind of helps. Oh, uh, left my phone upstairs. I'm gonna go just get that. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying, oh, there it is. Did you see it? Okay. Yep. So, and it helps because you can kind of see, look at where the shoreline lands right there, right? So, um, and e we can even take, um, I've got a something here that I can draw a straight line that kind of helps too. Since it's water. I had a, oh, I do. I have a ruler here I could use. A ruler? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sweetie. I'm in my art class now, okay? Like that. So is that about a third? Yep, it's a third. Oh, cool. Yeah, so do you, did you see the uh, gridded picture portion? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so see how that helps? Yep. Um, and it is important to keep that pretty straight and level. Um, obviously, water follows to the, the flat, and we want to make sure that it's level. Um, so, like I said, I'm just going to very lightly sketch, probably very lightly up here into the mountain, because it's, it's pretty, um, it's light. If you looked at the black and white photo I sent over, Look at how the bottom half value-wise versus the top half. So we've got very light values up on the top. We've got medium to dark down below. Um, compositionally, the trees lead us, right? Kind of almost in a S form from the top, from the foreground to the midsection and then to the peak of the mountain. However, color wise in order to uh, create a visual uh, way into the painting we're going to bring some of those light values down into the foreground just a little bit um, uh, just to balance it a, a little bit uh, better than what it is right now but overall this is a pretty decent picture so um, and trees I'm okay with how they're sitting. You can shorten them a little bit if you'd like, but just remember we don't want them all looking like soldiers. So um, the black and white picture just kind of helps us see the, not focus on the detail, but rather just the shapes themselves. So as we sketch, remember, we're just looking at shapes. We're not looking at detailed quite yet. So you guys know that. All right, let's start. Um, I'm going to come right in here. I'm using just the side of my pastel, very light. I'm just following that tree line. So it's just back and forth. And I fit this on a bigger piece of paper than what what the photo printed, that's okay. Um, I do like this tree off to the far right and how it's kind of hanging out and curved over. So I'm gonna keep that. I like that. So we're, and I'm going to drag just a little bit of this down in here. 
We've got a dip farther down in the center, some grass and some more trees. And when this tree is almost tangent with this water line, again, that's something we need to address. Either we're gonna go higher or we're gonna go lower. So right now I'm just gonna set it and we'll make that decision as we move through the painting a little bit more. Reason why is because as you know, um, it gets a little confusing for the viewer and we want to give a sense of depth so if we have that tree coming over our horizon, it's not, or below it, it's not enough information for us. Now look at this tree off to the left, it's coming way up high and that is important. That gives us a lot of information that these trees, all of this is in the front. And just making a little bit darker here. I like all of this bright red foliage in the front. It's so pretty with that green. I believe this is in Washington. Okay. I think this tree off to the left is a good anchoring tree kind of keeps our eye within the painting. So I am going to include it. And I'm just gonna follow the ridge line. Just not too dark. Um, it comes kind of high up into here, doesn't it? Squint your eyes if you need to. Sometimes that helps. Just following along the edge. We'll cut back in with our uh, sky color, but um, as you know, this is just our road map, what we want to make sure that we include and what we don't want to forget. I like the curvature of this mountain where we have this snow and it's again leading our eye right down to here. So we do want to make sure we don't forget about that piece. These, and it's kind of hard to see, but um, it's important to have that in our painting. And we've got another angle, lots of angles and shadows. And I'm just, again, following along with the edge of the rocks. So when we come in with our underpainting, we kind of have an idea of what, where we're gonna put things, our values. And that's important to have this ridge over here. Okay. Okay. That's about it. Take a picture here. So we're gonna start with our lightest light. So it's a very light, light purple. And this is what I'm gonna use up in the sky area. I'll just come along the edges. This is 500 grit. So I'm very, I'm gonna be going pretty light. Oops. Um, just because, again, as being heavy handed, I can't load. So I'm just filling this in. Okay. 
and then one of the things in turn in deciding again with value wise for our underpainting remember our upright shapes especially our trees and here in the mountain they're going to be our darkest values because the light hitting it is not as as much um, but we also need to put this in the distance and we also need to make sure that we're taking into account these these planes so it actually reads um, properly so with that being said even though this technically the mountain and the trees would be the darkest darks we're gonna we're gonna make this um, darker than this and this is going to be brighter in hue so it's going to be more saturated because it's going to be up in the front so I just want to kind of explain the process of deciding so here's my mountain okay and I'm going to do this this is going to be my trees and this is going to be down here in the foreground so I just want to take a picture so I can show you and this takes some time to think about it doesn't just happen you have to really think about how how do I want this to read so I'm going to start with the top purple that it's like a gray but it's still in the dark value um, and it is dark that's okay we're going to lay some color over it and I'm just going to very lightly very lightly And then I'm going to come back with this middle uh, purple. It's kind of brighter. And I'm going to come right over it by mixing. like that. Okay. <clears throat> the dark the trees. Some people say, why are you doing blue and then coming back in again with purple? Well, one of the things with pastels that we love is the layering part of it. So it's important if we were to just paint what we see local color, it's not gonna visually read. Um, I mean, it, it will, but it would be very boring. We don't want boring, we want color. We want to make it. Um, sorry, Marie. Um, which um, which violet is that? I'm I'm pretty sure that what I'm seeing on the screen is not what you're painting. Oh no, you yeah. sent it. Sorry, I'm way behind. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay. Can you? See? Oh, here it goes. Yeah. Okay. And it's like a dark. So you're using the top one of three? Yeah, so, this is like the dark purple right. for the trees. Mm -hmm. okay. We're just trying to set ourselves up a little bit, right? This helps us pave our way when we go and put those top colors on. And we'll come back in with some more darks, but um, this is not my usual underpainting color, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna work. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna drag some of that purple. Um, I've got that bright, bright purple. We're gonna put it in for that dirt. 
I know, it's bright. But it's going to be fun. I might even put a little bit right in here where we're going to lay that bright green over that. This is that muted, got a little trail kind of coming back in there. And these trees come right to the to the edge. And that big tree. And got some here. Okay. I'll take a picture. So we're going to use that brush. And for you, Julia, if you are just the blending tool um, and both, you don't forget to use your brush just like you would with your pastels. So we're going to paint it just like what we see on here. I'm going to use the 70% today. And I, I'm going to use a flat brush and I'm going to use a fan brush. I think I'm going to use those, the fan brush on the trees to get a little bit more of a, a design element that helps. A little bit of the character of the tree. How's everyone doing? Slow, as always. That's okay. That's all right. You're in no rush. No rush at all. So you, you're you starting with the lights and moving to the darks with the wash? Yeah. yeah, and the reason why is because we want to preserve this alcohol as clean as, as possible. And you could even do two separate containers if you want, and some people do. Mm -hmm. It's just that it, I don't wanna drag my dark up into my light. So, yeah. Good question. I'm going to pay attention a little bit more to the edge of the mountain, but again, not terribly too much. We'll get, get that fixed with the sky. I'm pulling my, my brush in the direction of the mountain. So you see this face of this rock is coming straight down, this face of the rock's coming off to the left. I, I, I want my paintbrush to follow in those directions. Always take your time on this. This is an important step. Always. Mm -hmm. 
I can muddy up quite a bit real fast. This comes off to the left a little bit more and then down. And down here. And if you need to, you can use your um, paper towel or something too. Sometimes even coming, instead of from the top down, going from the bottom up. If you have a dark color and you don't want it to blend too much. These just kind of fade. In the distance. You can always lift some of your paint off if you need to. If it gets too dark. I Going around three, I think. And I don't want to lose that ridge because it does come down. It's quite steep. Quite steep. So Marie, you recommend doing the, the alcohol wash at the top and then the kind of the fan at the bottom? Um, I would do the opposite um, just so you can darken your tree area a little more mm -hmm. um, because that alcohol wash is going to darken your trees versus a, a dry rub. Okay. So that's what so I would do. Dry rub at the top and then I think I, I would yeah and you can even wet it a little bit at the top if you want but I would do it down down below and see how that looks this this uh, scene requires a little bit of time as you can tell so I'm going to switch to the fan brush, see what I can get an effect. The fan brush has a fun way of dispersing the paint. And I'm using the edge, just tapping up and down, blending. Don't want to forget about these trees that come right up into the front. Now with this reflection, I know you guys are busy painting maybe in different areas, but our reflection piece, we're going to be painting vertical, right? Bringing those um reflections because then at the end 
we'll be dragging our pastel over horizontally so it gives that illusion. This fan brush is um, pretty soft. So It's always interesting to see when you put in a lighter pastel what it's going to look like when it's wet. Might all just blend to be the same, which is okay. I can come back in and take some of it out. Just like that. This is a stiffer brush. So it's letting me. We even have that light peeking through back into here. And why I'm doing this? Because we wanted it just toned, but I don't want to lose that light. How are, how are you getting the light there? I am taking my brush and it's a hard bristle brush and I'm just putting it mm -hmm. in the alcohol and wetting it and it lifts it off. Oh, I see, I see. Yep. So the what happened was is that lighter purple it it didn't necessarily paint on as light as I thought it would. So so I'm just kind of taking some off. And it's by doing that, I'm getting that bright purple that I initially wanted to tone that area. So that helps. Spending the time on this sure helps. Knowing where everything kind of sits. Okay. Now, I'm going to use, I'm just going to scrub it in because these are shrubs. So, pushing pretty hard into the paper. Just like that. I'm 
my alcohol is pretty dark. Okay, I'm going to come back with my fan brush. Flicking it out because it's is a nice see how it can create those limbs for you. And it does come right up just like this. Got another little one sitting here. And another one just kind of missing part of itself. <laughs> And I'm just going vertical and then to the side, letting my fan brush as a painter. This is the um easier way of creating trees. When we're working in pastel, it's trickier. We have to find ways to make our tree believable. And and so sometimes if we can use our, our brushes to kind of help out with that. So I'm going back over. Just touching it a little bit with my wet fan brush. He's come way down into here. I'm going to just drag a little bit darker right in the center. Normally I don't advise that, but Lux archival paper um, is also nice because it doesn't see York can sometimes buckle or it feels that way. So, and Lux Archival does not, so it's just a little bit more expensive. Okay. It's kind of cool just by itself. Your paintings are fun. I'm going to take some of this off just in the area of light grass. And then right down in here. It's going to take a little bit. How is it going, Julia, with the alcohol? It's um, it's interesting. It's is very it? different. 
<laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's very the way it goes on. I think I probably needed to be maybe a little bit more heavy handed with my paint. But no, I mean, it's 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 not too bad. Um, OK, send it over because I want to see. Because uh, see, this is the this I mean, we that's the beauty of this type of medium, right, is you can just I love it. It's just, yeah, so much fun to experiment, isn't it? Exactly. And there's no right or wrong way. It's just a process. So you find out what works for you. And that's the most important right now is finding out what process you like. And then, it, and then and the only way you're going to find out is if you experiment, just like what you're doing. Hold on a second here, I'll look. Oh, I like it. I like it just like that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I love it. It's just, uh, I love the idea of doing the, the dried brush at the top that was inspired Marie really great idea good so see how doing the because if you were to wet the top I think it would have been a little bit too dark on that pastel mat mm -hmm. um but that's just knowing how to use that paper properly too but then you've really you've already said it it already is reading in the distance your mountain so let me see Jackie oh yeah yeah that's awesome. Good. Good job. Yeah, so let's let it dry. It's going to dry a little bit, a little bit darker or uh, lighter, but not I might have much. to grab a hair dryer because I'm using Gamsol and it doesn't dry as quickly. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I would do. I would, I would do definitely that. do that. Yeah. I know. That's the, because the alcohol can be a little nauseating. Oh, I'll take them. I'm letting mine dry too. That's fun. Oh, I'm so ready for the year to be over. I bet. Have you had all of your shopping done? Um, not quite. Uh, we're 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 in a bit of a mess here because we were having our bathroom done, and oh, um, the idea being that it would be kind of done before Christmas. But then the builders got COVID and they gave it to my husband and my daughter. Oh no! Uh, so they've left site, and um, yeah, we're in a kind of a dust-infested pit. <laughs> With um, and obviously we're in isolation, so yeah, we're kind of yeah, it's a bit of a mess here. Really. <laughs> so where does your husband and daughter are they downstairs or somewhere else or in their room or how does that? Um, my husband is downstairs. Yeah, um, because we'd all moved around to kind of make space for the bathroom to be done. We'd kind of shut off some of the bedrooms to stop the dust going in. So my daughter had actually ended up moving into the bedroom with us. And when my husband tested positive, he moved downstairs and um, then my daughter was still in the bedroom with me because she was testing negative and so was I. And then she tested positive as well. I'm still testing negative um, yeah. somehow, like we're a week in now yeah. um, and I'm still testing negative. So fingers crossed it stays that way. This, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's wow. mad here. It's really mad here. It's like just gone nuts. This whole really called Omicron thing. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. So, do you feel because you guys were in lockdown at some point, right? Yeah, last time when I joined the art class, actually, we were in lockdown. That's what I last thought. Time. I was like, I could not. We couldn't go out. Couldn't do anything. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna try and do some art because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, are they that a distraction? <laughs> so. For sure. Are they going to let travelers continue to come or no, do you think? Yeah, I mean, 
I think the thing is, I mean, it was just a bit of a joke, really, because they they went, oh, we've only got two cases. So let's lock up, you know, anybody coming from South Africa or these African countries, they've got to go into <laughs> quarantine. And and of course, yeah. they just haven't realised that it was already everywhere. Um, and so they've been making these poor people coming in, stay in these hotels where they're like, you know, spending two thousand pounds a week or something. And they then it's and. And now, literally two weeks later, they've gone, oh, OK, we've got 10,000 cases. It's already community transmission. You can all go home now. And it just, it's just nuts. I mean, oh. I know, it's so frustrating. And the rest of the world is trying to lock us out now, of course. But it's everywhere. It's in some, you know, it's like in 90 countries. So, I know. yeah, you can't stop it. It's just going to do it. No, exactly. That's... That's unreal. We had um, a coworker and his brother went on a cruise. He had tested positive and then retested at the airport and it was negative. So the cruise line let him on. And he was into his cruise, let's see, it was a seven day. So it was like on the fifth day, um, they tracked him down the government tracked him down on the cruise line the cruise people made him quarantine move to another room and quarantine for two days rest the rest of his cruise and then he got off in florida and was put on his dime in a hotel for another week right yeah that's what they're doing here that kind of thing it's like it's yeah it's just insane well things mad and, uh, the, and then he's still testing negative. So what was, I guess, the first test, uh, no matter what. I, yeah, I haven't quite figured the logic. No. So. Yeah, it's mad. Uh, all right. How did you do, Jackie? Um, I had to find an extension cord, but I tried it. <laughs> 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 you never knew this painting class would involve exercise. No, no, that was good. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, good job. Um, we're going to go back in and reinforce our darks with a couple more colors. So I've got another purple, a little bit more purple, and I'm talking about the trees and a little bit in here. Um, not too much. I, I like what I have going on here, but just darken up a little bit, not not terribly much, because again, I don't want it competing with our foreground. So this again is going to be just a shade uh, cooler in temperature, uh, but still still dark. Um, and so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So I've got some greens here. So this is like a green gray. This is like a blue green. Relatively in the same value family, medium to dark. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna grab a piece here and I'm thinking about that's pretty dark. I might use a little bit of that in the dark, dark. And this is like a really dark green. And of course, I always pull some sticks, but you kind of have to see what it looks like once you start. So I'm using the edge, right, to test. And this is a warmer green. <clears throat> so I'm going to have it in the warmer areas where the sun's hitting it. This is a warmer brown purple. I'm looking for same value, some darks. We're just layering on here. Um, so these are the back trees i've got these colors let's see what they how they work so in the picture that i'm sending you it's in this order 
this is what they look like on the paper. And I'll send them here. <clears throat> okay. There's that. So these are the back trees. Hmm. So see, you've got more of a paler green, but it's warmer. So thinking about where, where that sun, that light source is coming from this angle, right? And we, we know that because we see it hitting these trees at an angle right here, all on the right side almost. We've got the middle, which is in the shadow. And then we've got this gray green, which is kind of where I'm looking at is in the middle part of that tree. So what I'm talking about is you've got your your really, really dark shadow area, then you're moving to the middle, and then eventually you're getting to that warmer side where that sun's hitting the tree. That's that's the process I'm thinking. This is where you realize you just don't have the colors. <laughs> that's okay. So the, the biggest thing you want, and you can use, just even two greens. Just look to the blue greens if you have them, mm -hmm. um, or some dark green, and then you can hit it with some lights in the cooler, bluer family in the color, and then the more saturated um, yellow greens in the front. Yeah, and when I say front, down here in the foreground, because. As long as you have the value correct, you can pick whatever color you want, but you have to have that value correct. So again, we're going to start and reinforce the darks. So that's our next step. And so I'm, I'm going to refer back to my black and white picture. I think that would help. You can also squint your eyes at the picture. Um, but I'm using the black and white because I think that helps weed out that detail that my eye, my brain wants to go immediately to, right? It's just totally normal. If we so were to this, use, go this ahead. Is your, this is your really dark green now, is that right? This is my dark green, and I'm just going on mostly the left sides of these trees, right? Um, and I'll, I'll probably darken them up a little bit more with some maybe dark purple. We'll see. Um, something I would like to, to teach you, you guys, is what we call a high key painting. And I don't know if you're familiar with that term. But what happens is, is your really darks, and I'm talking about anything from your mid value to your darkest darks, you don't, you can't use any of your sticks. You are forced to make those medium. So you're literally in, so I, you know my palette, how it's set up. So I have the dark, medium, and lights. It's from the medium to the lights. You can only pull from those sticks. So you're, really dark ones can only be your medium value. What it does is it it keeps your your color range pretty tight. Um, but it's fun. It's challenging. Uh, and I think we might we might branch out into something like that. So you're taking the dark yep. green so and going over the trees. I'm going over the purple and I'm only doing the very darkest darks. So look at your okay. black and yeah, look at your black and white photo. Okay. <clears throat> and just look at your very, very okay. dark areas. And that's where we're adding this dark green. Okay, and then remember what goes up top goes straight down into the water. Yep. I'm 
I'm going to lightly hit this left tree with this green, but we'll come back in with the mountain color and carve around it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my medium. It's just like when you see a an orange and still life when we painted something like that where you're going from your really dark to your mid-tone and then you see that really light you're working along the surface that's kind of what we're doing here on these trees okay thinking about where that light source is what's tricky in this picture is they're all very similar in the value but we're going to have to adjust this i'm using my middle tone And how we adjust is the saturation, the brightness. <clears throat> and I'm just coming over here. There wasn't too much light on this tree off to the far right. It's actually two trees. You can make it one if you like. I'm still letting my purple show through. I like that. That's entirely your choice. And I'm gonna come over here into the center. I'm pressing a little harder. And I'm going to just drag some of this green right down below. Blending slightly with my finger. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to leave just those two. And I'm going to take a picture and I'll show you where I'm at. So I know you guys are still busy catching up here. Right now, it feels like our trees are floating and we're gonna ground them with some dirt color here shortly. But what I wanna do is the same process in the front, but we're gonna use uh, greens in the more warmer tones, okay? So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And let's see here. So I've got this color and then I've got this color. Okay. So this is what they look like on the paper. So same process as what we were just doing. I'm gonna come in on the dark part of the tree. That comes right up into here. Looks nice along that purple. thinking about 
where this is warmer, the warmer green. So it's going on the sun side where if you need to refer back to the black and white. wherever that sun is hitting it. And just coming right along the edge here. And then we're going a shade lighter, still in the warm family. I'm gonna just indicate where the top of this tree is. It's got a branch kind of coming out here. And I'm just tapping. This is a square. And um, so I'm using the edge just and it's going to have even brighter green. We're just getting it started. And we've got some branches hanging out over here. Okay. Just getting the movement. Okay, and I see some of this warmth and you can pop it up into here, but I'm kind of wanting to get that ground in first because it's again kind of floating around, but I'm going to take a picture here so you can see. And then you guys send over your pictures too, please. So I can see where you're at. <clears throat> and this is a stage where we can really go bold. Um, bold in colors we choose, higher saturation, because we're going to come back over it, right? And that's what I'm talking about is the ground area. Um, so I've got some cooler and warmer in the same family. So and let me see. If that might be better. Same process for the dirt area. And this is So red violet, we've got more warm reddish browns, and then we've got more blue in the shaded. And this is for the dirt area that's up here into the trees. And what we're just looking at again, and if you need to refer to to your uh, um, black and white, do so. And I'm just tapping in the areas where the sun is hitting, right? And we'll drag some of that down into the water. It kind of comes back up into here. It sneaks back into here, I like that.
Okay. And we've got a little bit down into here. Kind of what we're doing is we're going around into the negative shapes, looking at the negative shapes of the trees. And yeah, sneak some of this red back into here. And back into here. Very light touch. And it looks like this is this hillside, right? It's it's going up. So it's important to pull pull that maybe in that direction. And just like this. Okay. <clears throat> and you can bring even some of this down into here. We're going to go a little bolder down and in, into this dirt area. But we do need to, to ground around these. So I've got that purple, and now I'm just kind of looking at the shaded areas, not getting as much of that sun. And just reinforcing that. We'll go darker which is fine. That gives it a nice transition. I'll drag some of that down into here. Okay. My greens are really not working for me today. You what? <laughs> I think I'm struggling a little bit with um, the colors. On the this. colors? Yeah, you know when it, it's like they don't come out the way that you normally expect them to. I think it's because I'm using a different paper. Um, and it is, yeah, you're using different paper. Um, and that's why it's really hard for me to just send over a pre-selected palette for everyone. I can pick out, I can pick out uh, the basics, but as you can tell, once once you get your, um, underpainting in it, it the, ch the colors when they lay on each other change so what you yeah so what you think is going to work is not going to work yes exactly and, I'm trying uh, to figure out your green is you've got a kind of at the front you've got a green you've got two greens you've got a light one which is which I've got which is fine but then you've got one underneath and I can't Yes, so that's going to be like your evergreen. It's going to be like your fir tree green or your wreath color green. So it's going to be that just your your good old fashioned dark green. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. It's going to and it's going to have a little bit more yellow added to it. So it's going to be warmer if you don't have and in your set. Yeah. I just don't think I've got one. You do? Okay. No, I don't think I do. You don't? Okay. So you can you can take some uh, blue and green and see if you can't. Uh, mm. Let me see. Maybe what this would. That's going to do like a really lighter green. See if you can't get a, a yellowy 
like a cad yellow like that and then maybe like a ultramarine blue and see if you can't mix those two to get that dark green mm -hmm. um yeah, it's something. You can do that a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty much having very similar <laughs> issues. And send over what you have for your greens. I can help you look. Okay. <laughs> now it's like testing out your your blues and purples and what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. Did you? Uh... I found a blue. Okay. It was going to work. Okay. And then I'm going to just go over the top of it with the yellow and see what that does. And then, okay. And then I'm going to send it over so you can laugh. Yeah. <laughs> no, just send it. This is a bit mess. <laughs> this is the tricky part, finding out what will work. <clears throat> okay and then so let me see here jackie yeah you found the those greens work in the front jackie okay. Okay. yeah so and now what you want to do is uh go back in a little bit more in the front with that green Mm-hmm. And um, so like this, you're going to take your, your pastel and you'll come in here and then just kind of set your pastel down and then drag it like this. Set it down, drag it. What it will do is it will kind of soften those bright greens mm -hmm. and fill in some of that spacing so it's starting to blend it like a tree. But which... Are you doing that with a dark green? Your dark green on the front that you used yes. on this tree, yeah. Yep. yep. Do that. And then uh, let me see. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of trying to. These are just some testing of blues. That's more, you know, it's like, what, what will work? What will not? And you got this really bright blue. 
It might be a combination. And so now that's a bright blue. Oops. And it is electric blue. And let's see. This might be more. Sometimes it it takes a little bit to figure out what's going to work. And that's too much in the same value. So I need that brighter blue in here. I'm just seeing if this is going to work. We're carving around the trees. Um got this dark. Don't want to lose that coming down in here. I think this blue is going to work. Now, if you don't have exact, not to worry. What you really want to do is create a contrast between your trees and that dark blue. And it kind of comes up here. And then we've got another ridge. Mountains aren't super easy, but you don't have to make them too hard either. Okay. This is the blue I used. Um, And I think it's going to work. It's bright. But I can come back in. I'm just going into the dark areas. And really, it's just in this bottom half of the mountain. I think we lost the image. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
I think it needs an update or something, or I don't know what it's wanting me to do. Okay. It needs to be a shade lighter. So let me see if that works. I'm looking at the snow and I feel like that needs to be a little lighter. It's definitely lighter down in here. Did you uh, figure out the trees, Julia? Were you able to get that to work? I've lost her. Sorry, I didn't realize I put myself on mute. I was saying I. No, you're fine. I was saying, were you able to figure out the trees? Kind of. Oh, that's gone sideways. That's really weird. It's bright. It's bright, bright blue. <laughs> Does that work better? Oh yeah, there we go. Bright, bright, bright blue. And kind of left this tree got a little bit forgotten. just happens that
A lot of back and forth on this. And kind of come in and reinforce this tree. Trees aren't the easiest. The sky is a very, very light purpley blue. And when we put that sky in, make sure we come down with a little bit of that warmer turquoise. Just light. So it is sunny. I'm just, I actually am coming over that hillside. That's okay. like a blue like a gray blue now oh. needs more purple to it this is going to be the hard part of finding the right color. It's challenging. It's really challenging. Well, because we're so close in value. So that's what the challenge is, is remaining the same value, but a different color but having um, the right temperature, right? There's three things going on, value, temperature, and hue. Uh, those three things are hard when they're very, very tight like this. And that's not gonna be the right one. So it's just a matter of testing, <laughs> testing to see what's going to work. Okay. If you can see the top 
of the mountain a little bit better. It's not like shining on it. Well, I don't know if that really helps. <clears throat> right in here. I'm just taking some of this off. To come in with a lighter color. And then it's going to be a multitude of blending different colors to get that. change here, subtle change. Okay. <coughs> we could spend all day on this mountain alone. I'm sure of it. It's just these gradual shifts in color that are tricky. And the only way you can get to it is just really, really light feather touches. And that might work well in the coming up along this back side of the mountain. We have a little bit of that warmer 
heart. That's still in shadow. How are we doing on time? I'm going to say on this snow, it's not white white but it's going to be a warm yellow here um very very pale let's see if this works might be even too yellow We can certainly leave that. Pale. Just to kind of see how it looks with against everything else. Now it's going to be lighter. And just doing the direction of the pastel at an angle where we see the snow kind of come down the hillside, just having it coming, starting from down here on the left and then kind of pulling up a little bit, it helps indicate that direction. So that's important. Thank you. 
and blending. Do a lot of squinting. Have to find find a blue. How are you guys doing? We're just coming up to being almost done here. Making a nice mess here today. I think this is going to take a bit more work. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it, it, is a, it, it is a big painting. But I, I had, my intention was also to give you something to kind of continue to work on. Um, like for the whole of the holiday break. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah definitely um i'm gonna take a picture here and why don't you uh, oh yeah that's nice julia it's very nice i love the mountains and yeah oh wow it's really beautiful. Yeah. Mine is kind of like mud at the moment. Oh, gosh. Right? Yeah, I think I might just do it again sometime. But Yeah. This is the figuring out where you're going to put everything. Um, we're carving in and around the trees, putting back the trees, carving around the snow. Ooh, I love that, Jackie. It's very abstract. <laughs> it is, but um, I wouldn't touch the top of the mountain. And even like how you have blended coming down into the shadow part, if mm -hmm. anything, I would just soften those dark edges right here. Yep. And just maybe tap them a little bit with your finger. And but I wouldn't even touch over on this side. That looks great. OK. Um, yeah, and then you, you're already putting in the lights down here and yeah. leaving. Yeah, so I think intuitively you're seeing where you need to. You're working the edges, and 
And honestly, that's the most important part of this painting is these edges. And this is what I'm talking about falling along on this water, the edge of these trees. This is where you want to spend most of your time, the edges along these trees where the mountain is. Mm -hmm. um, because we can't have everything super detailed. It would just be too confusing. So hit your edges, pay attention to these, and then put your lights in, lead the viewer through, as I, we were talking about earlier. Um, I think it's beautiful. I would carve out a little bit more on your tree here on the right-hand side, just a little. And you can do that with that purpley blue. Yep. So see how I kind of, I've made some gestural type marks, um, but you can come back and I've lost some of my tree, but um, yeah. And a new pastel is always nice to have too. Um, doesn't need to be too much, but yeah. Uh, and if you run out of tooth, just come back in with um, your uh, fixative. And I like these branches that kind of come down and I like the, the gesture of them. So I, I, I want to keep those in and how it's leaning. So I'll probably come in with a brighter blue um, in these areas, right? So these pop forward. And maybe even a brighter one. I'll have to, I can try that out. And that's, I suggest doing that if you have, this is, Definitely a brighter blue, like a cobalt blue. Let's see if that works. I don't know, might not. This is what I'm struggling with because I've put in the blues and they just look like a bit of a mess. So I'm kind of going back over with different colors and thinking, no, that doesn't work either. Yeah, um, so <laughs> that's okay though, because this is how, the, you know, we can't come out with a masterpiece right from the get go, but you both have come really far. So uh, yours, you can continue on. I don't suggest redoing, but you can redo in the fact that um, now you have, right, it's muscle memory. You've already painted it, you've drawn it. So when you go back into it again, it's gonna be like, oh yeah, the tree's here, the tree's here. So you're gonna move through the process a little bit uh, more intuitively. and you're gonna reach for the right sticks and color just a little bit more. Um, so I do encourage you to do this a couple times actually. This particular scene and even the one that we did last week, they both have a lot of structural pieces going on in there, meaning like you're having to really, really look at how to create a 2D picture into a 3D. So you're really working your foreground and not, and, and this means like our foreground, at least what we've done right now is not necessarily using the same colors yet up here. We, we don't want it to be segregated where we only use certain colors down in the foreground, certain colors in the mid plane, and then the distance. We, we do want to carry that throughout, um, which I see you guys kind of starting to do that, but um, I encourage you to, to do it again um, and try a different underpainting a different way if you want um, and see if see if you like it better um, and if you don't like how you use the the two two different ways I think I liked what what you had what happened yeah I enjoyed that actually yeah it was interesting exactly so, and you wouldn't maybe necessarily do that. So I would, I'd continue on with things like that. Um, so good job, everyone. And you guys have a lovely holiday. You too. 
thank you. Thank you, Marie. Yeah. So you're, just, you're just so awesome. You're such a great <laughs> It's been such a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. And please keep sending me over the pictures today and or through the week if you do them or do them again. I'll okay. help you along. So you're always welcome to do that. So, Thank all right. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Good Sounds job, good. everyone. You have a great break. All right. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.